welcome to one and all present here. The title of my topic is The Role of Consciousness in Spiritual Awakening in the Context of Mandukya Upanishad. As we all know, the spiritual and intellectual darsanic traditions of India have profound, produced many spiritual gurus and races. They are the spiritual gurus who sowed the spiritual paths to the human beings. In the spiritual traditions, the guru sister relationship is considered to be essential for spiritual growth and enlightenment. The guru provides the necessary guidance, support, and wisdom that enables disciples to navigate the complexities of their spiritual journeys. As we know, it is stated in the Vedas, Chitram Bhatta Tarud Mule Pradha Sitsya Guru Juba Guraste Maunabakshanam Sitsya Strehina Sanchaya. First of all, I'll, I would like to discuss what spiritualism is all about. The Upanishads are the production of the highest human wisdom and are considered to be the most valuable treasures of the world. It comes under the Sruti tradition, which is eternal and authoritative. Studying the Upanishad has been a great inspiration because it allows us to redefine our existence. The spiritualism of Indian thought started with the Upanishadic knowledge of self-consciousness as the spiritual substance played a significant role in spiritual awakening. It is also the ground of material experience of the world. To quote Sri Aurobindo, spirituality is in its essence an awakening to the inner reality of our being. To so it is very important to understand the contemporary re relevance of spiritual awakening in the Mandukya Upanishad. In today's fast-paced and fragmented world, many people experience a sense of disconnection, stress, and anxiety. The Mandukya Upanishad's exploration of consciousness offers a path to reconnect with the self and the world. By understanding the different states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and the transcendental career, individual can gain insights into the nature of our mind and existence, helping them navigate life's challenges with greater clarity and clear. The Upanishad emphasizes that true peace and happiness are found not in external circumstances, but in realizing one's true nature, which is beyond the engaged, changing states of consciousness. In a time when mental health issues are prevalent, the teachings on Turiya, the states of pure consciousness can guide individuals toward inner peace, resilience, and a stable sense of self that is not swayed by external fluctuations. The concept of spiritual awakening in the Mandukya Upanishad is about realizing the oneness of the individual self with the ultimate reality that is Brahman. This realization can lead to profound personal transformation where one transcends ego-driven desires and fears, leading to a life of greater purpose, compassion, and harmony. In the contemporary context, this can inspire individuals to live more consciously with a sense of responsibility toward themselves and the world. The Upanishad, as Mandukya Upanishad declares, Brahman is subtler, then the subtlest. All the world exists in him. He is the principle of life and imperishable and immortal in nature. The final goal of all human beings is to attain him. It's from Mandukya Upanishad. The quest of about the Mandukya Upanishad, when we see why this Upanishad is important for many reasons, the quest for infinity has been stated since time immemorial. Amongst all underdated Upanishad, the Mandukya Upanishad is regarded as the most important, and it is said that man Mumuksham Ekam Evam Alam Mumuksham Vimukte. For the liberation, the Mumukshu or the seeker of Mandukya alone is enough. Mandukya Upanishad gives us an account of human nature and their existence. Mandukya Upanishad belongs to the Atharva Veda and contains only 12 verses. It is profound in nature 
and occupies a central place amongst all Upanishads because it provides complete information about life and its creation. It's the only Upanishad that provides the symbolic significance of the sacred syllable Om and it related, relates it to the four states of consciousness which we have discussed later. The coming back to that, as I said that the Om is the most important thing and the significance of the Om is the most important thing in the Mandukya Upanishad. So Om as the totality of experience. So when we say Om, it consists of three letters, A, U, and Ma. A represents the waking state, Vishwanara, where consciousness is drawn toward and we experience the external world. Who represents the dream state, Taijasa, where consciousness is drawn inward and we experience a world created by our mind. Ma represents the deep sleep state, Pragya, where there is no desire, no dream, only undifferentiated consciousness. Silence after Om, that is the state of Sukuriya, which represents the fourth state, transcending all duality, a state of pure consciousness, the ultimate reality or Brahman. Om is imperishable, eternal, and it is all this, everything in this world is nothing but an explanation of Om. Om Sarvam Omkara Eva. Everything is Om indeed. This is how the Upanishad begins. Om Itya Daksharam Idam Sarvam. All this, whatever is visible, whatever is cognizable, whatever can come within the purview of sense perception, inference, or verbal testimony, whatever can be comprehended under the single term creation, all this is Om. Om stands for creation. It is said that the pronunciation of Omkara several times generate positive energy and makes you strong chanting of Omkara mantras cure many diseases. In many traditions, people use Om to greet, greet each other, especially in cyber tradition. Cyber has been reciting Om many times and people used to do japa of many mantras any mantra with the chanting of Om. The recitation of Om is like speaking a universal language, one that encompasses all other languages within itself. When chanting Om or Pranava, the vocal system regenerates in a deeply holistic way, unlike uttering individual letters like A, B, or C, which activate specific parts of the vocal apparatus the sound of Om causes the entire vocal chamber to vibrate as a whole. This is a matter, matter of experiment. Any one of you can experiment with it and observe the result. Om is also a vibration, not merely a word or a sound. Om is a vibration, a universal vibration with which creation commenced. As they say, Manuspriti, Mahabharat, the Puranas and the Upanishads describe the nature, the constitution, the structure, the glory of Om. With Om, Brahma created the cosmos and from Om constituted the three isolated letters, uh, isolated letters, O, O, and Ma. A recitation of Om, even three times correctly done, is enough to burn up all sins, to put a suggestion to all desires and make you calm quiet and satisfied within yourself. The Mandukya Upanishad, when it comes to the role of consciousness in spiritual awakening, the Mandukya Upanishad posits that the consciousness is the fundamental reality underlying all existence. The different states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep are seen as layers of experience that veils the true nature of reality, which is pure consciousness or Turiya. This understanding shifts the focus from the material world, prayers to the inner experience, encouraging a deep exploration of the self and the nature of existence, that is uh, Sreyas. The fourth state of consciousness, that is Turiya, is the most important thing in the Mandukya Upanishad. Turiya, the fourth state, is described as a state of pure, undifferentiated consciousness that transcends the 
other three states, it is beyond time, space, and duality, representing the ultimate reality or Brahman. In the context of spiritual awakening, Surya is the realization of the self, oneness with the ultimate reality leading to liberation from the cycles of birth, death, and suffering. Why the uh, role of consciousness in Mandukya Upanishad is important uh, so far as the modern theories of consciousness is concerned. The consciousness is a complex and multifaceted phenomena studied ex extensively in philosophy both in India and Western philosophical traditions, psychology, neuroscience, and cognitive science. Despite its complexity, consciousness remains one of the most intriguing and fundamental aspects of human experience and continues to be a subject of ongoing inquiry and exploration. This, In this paper, I try to understand the role of consciousness in spiritual awakening in the context of Mandukya Upanishad. I'd like to conclude with few observations and few, uh, few things. The Mandukya Upanishad teaching on consciousness and spiritual awakening offered timeless wisdom that is highly relevant in today's world by guiding individuals toward a deeper understanding of their own consciousness and its connection to the universe. These teachings can help address contemporary challenges related to mental health, personal fulfillment, ethical living, and global sustainability. The Upanishad encouraged a shift from the external to the internal, from fragmentation to the unity, offering a path to true peace and enlightenment. So my presentation, the whole of my presentation on Mandukya Upanishad and the spiritual model is based on two things that uh, I have taken into account. One is the faith-based model and the uh, second one is the experiential model. So spiritual activism includes faith-based learning and experiential learning are two educational approaches that can be distinct but also complementary, particularly in the context that aim to integrate spiritual development. When I said faith-based learning, it emphasizes moral and ethical development according to spiritual principles. Faith-based learning focuses on character development, nurturing virtues like honesty, compassion, and service to others. As defined by the faith tradition, the readers engage deeply with spiritual text, whereas experiential learning is a process where knowledge is created through the transformation of experience. It emphasizes learning through doing and reflecting on what one has done. A crucial aspect of experiential learning is reflection where students analyze and evaluate their experiences to derive meaning and understanding. Faith-based learning and experiential learning, when combined, offer a robust model that enhances academic and spiritual knowledge and foster character development, practical skills, and deeper understanding of how to apply one's faith in everyday life. So these two things are important when we do any kind of spiritual uh, model we talk about, whether it is Mandukya Upanishad or any other Upanishad, these two things are the most important component of the spiritual model. Om Santihi, Santihi, Santihi. Thank you all.